It's raining out. You can hear the comforting sound of rain and stuff like that. Uh, very, very soothing, actually. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at and discussing today. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Follow me along because as I tell you often, my mouth sometimes will go quicker than my brain. Okay? Sometimes I'll skip a groove. Also, too, if we come to a portion of scripture that we will be looking at today, and you yourself, you're watching or listening, are a little unsure about the context, pause the video and search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Search the context on your own time. Okay? Fatherless and widow. Fatherless and Widows. This video is actually something that was requested. Um, albeit, um, the direction in which the Lord took this, I don't think is the direction that uh, uh, the dear brother had intended or maybe thought of. I do not know. Um, but we are going to talk about the fatherless and the widow, but also on how it is in relation on to the single parent, whether that be a single mother or a single father, okay? Now, when it comes to this um, topic, um, to what we are going to be looking at, um, purposely, I, we are not going to go, for example, to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We are purposely not going to touch on that. Okay, we are purposely not going to touch on that. But the point of this video is, okay, whether you are a single mother or a single father, and you are saved of the church of the living God, okay, regardless of of where you what you want regardless of whether you are seeking a husband or a wife uh, regardless of that the thing that we have to remember is who is our father and who will never leave us again and this is a valid thing that people will bring up well, Brad you're not by yourself you're not alone in flesh you, you have a wife and you're right you're right you're right. You're right. But what saith the scripture? Okay? What saith the scripture about this thing? You're by yourself. You're a single father or a single mother. A single mother in a society and a world that tells you to do contrary to what the Lord says and go out and earn a living. And unfortunately, due to certain times of, of which we live, some of you sisters might, may be forced into such a situation. That is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Okay? That is unfortunate. But we have to remember... Who is our hope? Who is our father? Okay. I have not seen the righteous fors forsaken or his seed begging bread. Have you? Please turn with me in ex to Exodus chapter 22. Exodus chapter 22. Now, we're going to look at a couple of first appearance of the words fatherless and widow, okay? We're not going to look up widows because widows is the plural form, okay? And even though a widow does appear in Exodus 22, 
It's not the first appearance. We're going we're to look at this. Or, okay, we're, we're going to look at this. Or at, rather, we're going to look at an appearance when widow first appears as far as the singular is concerned. I did not look up the plural. Don't need to. Okay? But, Exodus 22. Exodus 22. We want verses 21 on to verse 24. Now, this was written on to the Jewish people, the Hebraic people, during a dispensation where it was faith and works. The Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, was not a permanent resident within anybody under the law. Okay? All right? He could come and go, come and go. Okay? The permanent seal until the day of redemption was not there in this dispensation. Hence, eternal security was not there in the dispensation under the law. No matter how these heretics and devils want to tell you that it is, it was not. Okay? It was not. All right? That's what makes this dispensation today so splendid. But, Exodus 22, verses 21 on to verse 24. We read, come on. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger, someone who is not of the Jewish people, okay? Nor oppress him. Why? For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And look across to Exodus chapter 23, verse 9. Look across the page. Exodus 23, verse 9. Also, thou shalt not oppress a stranger. For ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Hmm. See, we see, you're going to see with this video that there is a foundation given of the Lord unto his people that there is to be provision, care made for those, the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, and the poor, those who are in need, okay? Those that are in need. We are going to see that there is this provision made, okay? And see, it was a very stark reminder unto the Jewish people because, verse 9, Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And when Israel, the Hebraic people, the Jews, went down into Egypt at the first, okay, they were like immigrants that came, a good example of this, that came into Egypt as, so to say, a legal, a, a, legal immigrant, okay? And sojourn among uh, the Egyptians as if they were already part of them, even though they were strangers. But what happened was, over the process of time, another pharaoh, a new king came along, and then the Hebraic people were treated more like they were prisoners of war. Okay? So you saw a shift. And then when the Lord took the children of Israel out of Egypt, they were reminded. They were reminded not to think more highly of themselves as, as they are. or not, not think more highly of themselves. Okay? And hence... Having empathy, compassion, pity upon those who are in need. Okay? And, you know, a lot of these Christians will be like, well, okay, well, yeah, I will, especially to my own. But what about those who are not your own? Uh, there are those out there who will teach you that... Um, you shouldn't show, uh, we as the church of the living God, shouldn't even show any pity, mercy, or compassion onto those who are not of us. Uh, 
Did someone who was ever truly saved, when you were not, show pity and compassion and mercy upon you? Hmm? And Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. We want verses 3 on to verse 7. Titus chapter 3. Verses 3 on to verse 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Someone who is living in divers lusts and pleasures, malice, envy, hateful and hating others, right? You're thinking, well, who in the wide world of sports entertainment would have ever shoot mercy on such a one as that, huh? Have you forgotten from whence you came? Or are you one of these perfect creatures who are chosen because of your kindred or whatever? Or whatever, your elect or not, whatever. Huh? Have you forgotten where you came from? And remember too, Okay, we are not to dwell on our past, but yet we are not to forget, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. You were one of those lost people. You were one of those lost people. Maybe you were fatherless. Maybe you are fatherless. Maybe you are a widow. Hmm? Maybe you are a stranger. Maybe you are poor. And now, as the church of the living God, have you gotten so high-minded of yourself? You look around on some, at some of these people on YouTube and other platforms, I think the answer to that is a sad yes. Verse 4, but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done. Got to remember that, buddy. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior being justified by his grace, that, excuse me, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And what does it say of our Lord Jesus Christ? Huh? Verse 13 in chapter 2, looking for that blessed hope, comma, and, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And, of course, while we're on this train here, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. And don't forget this. Verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And you know what? I have encountered uh, at a vomitous rate <laughs> um, these Christians who will go to that verse and say, well, yeah, I, I wasn't as bad as Paul was. You, you, you got your, your head is in the wrong place. Any of us, and you brethren and sisters, you know this, any of us, I'm worse than Paul. You, you yourself, brother, sister, I'm worse than Paul. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, in talking with brethren, it's like, hey, I'm a sinner who is chief. 
And then a brother will be like, uh, you know, Brad, you, you don't know what I did. You don't know what I did, right? Right? Now, granted, too, some that could become a source of pride. Yes, I can. You got to watch out for that. But see, that mentality, when these Christians go to that, it's like, well, are you as bad as Paul? I was worse. Paul had religiosity before the Lord saved him. Okay? Back to that Exodus chapter 22, verse 21 again. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. You don't forget from whence the Lord took you out of. You don't dwell there. But you don't forget that you are in a dunghill without hope and without God. And the Lord took you because you came to him on his terms. You don't boot the door and then climb up some other way. Okay? So, and you see this and you, you, most of you are very well aware about the teachings in the New Testament, especially for us today in this dispensation about uh, caring for the poor, fatherless, and widow and that kind of stuff. Okay? But it's important that we see how this came about beforehand. Now let's continue. Verse 22. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Now, within Scripture, you will often see, not on every occurrence, but often you will see fatherless and or widow combined in the same shoe. Not at every time, because hold your place here and go to Genesis 38, okay? Genesis 38. We are going to look at the at least very first singular appearance of widow, okay? Genesis 38, verses 11 on to verse 14. Now this is talking about Judah and Tamar, okay? Tamar, who is given on to the sons of Judah, and the sons of Judah that were married on, or who took Tamar, um, they all died. And of course, Ur, E-R, which when you uh, look that name up, uh, is related onto error. Okay. And of course, you look what Ur did as far as, you know, giving seed onto the woman. Mm -hmm. But anyway, verses 11 on verse 14. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow. A widow. Okay? Widowed, widower, by the way, doth not appear in Scripture. Okay? It may very well appear in a Bible, but it doth not appear in the Scriptures. Okay? Widows, widow, yes. Widower, okay, widowed. Uh, does not appear. So, what do we see? Widow. A woman without a husband. That is the context in which widow is referring to. Now, for men nowadays, um, you hear that men are a widow as well. Okay? The context, however, shows us that widow was first on relation to a woman without a husband. Okay, because also too, brethren, people, you have to remember the order in which our Lord, our Father Jesus Christ, has established. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church. Okay, man, who is the head of woman. And it is up to father and mother to raise the child. God, man, woman, child. But today, that's all backwards. Okay? All made into hooey. Because they say what? God, woman, child, pet, and man. Okay? All right? Thanks to the Jesuits, of course. But we see in relation that a widow here in Scripture is a reference onto a woman. Okay? What do you call a man who lost his wife? They say widow, okay? I'm not going to personally get onto a big thing about that. I just wanted you to see this, okay? Then said Judah to Tamar, 
his daughter-in-law, remain a widow at thy father's house, till Sheila, pause, my son be grown. For he said, lest peradventure he die also. And his brethren did, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Now, Sheila, and you see Sheila, and you read the context from verses 1 on to verse 10 about the sons of, um, of Judah. You see where Sheila, hmm, okay? So, let's continue. Yes, let's read that again. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house, till Sheila, my son, be grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. And in process of time, the daughter of Shua's, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep sharers to Timnath, he and his friend Hira the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father in law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garments, from, uh, garments off from her, and covered her with a veil, and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given unto him to wife. That's where we're going to stop. And if you want to read the context, like I said, pause it and read it on your own time. So there's widow. Widow is, uh, in Scripture, first associated with a woman who has lost her husband. Okay? Nowadays, for a man to call him a widow, that whatever. But we see in Scripture, the base meaning of it, even though it is associated first, as we saw, onto a woman, the base, the root of the meaning is someone that has lost their spouse, okay? All right? Okay? And the fatherless, that's a no-brainer, right? Okay, so let's continue. Back to the Exodus. Okay? Verse 23. Now here's, here's the warning. If thou afflict them in any wise, afflict who? The widow or the fatherless? And they cry at all unto me. I will surely hear their cry. <clears throat> and my wrath shall wax hot. And I will kill you with the sword. And your wives shall be widows. And your children fatherless. Mm. And now some of you might be saying, well, Brad, today, well, where's the God of Elijah, right? Because are we not seeing the widows and fatherless persecuted? Hmm? Strangers and poor, okay? Are we not seeing that very persecution? Are we not seeing today that the widow and fatherless are being afflicted? Do we not see that today? Hmm? Hmm? And going to the communistic government here of America. Hmm. And you might be saying, well, where's the God of Elijah? Okay, where's the God of Elijah? you got to remember, vengeance belongs unto who? Belongs unto the Lord. You see that in three dispensations. Under the law in Deuteronomy. You see that also, I believe that is in uh, Romans 12 for this dispensation. And you also read about that in the book of Hebrews. Okay, so in three separate dispensations, we learn that vengeance belongs unto the Lord. But what do people say about today? You go to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. What happens? Well, what's happening today? What? And, and because of this, a lot of people think that, well, where is, where is the God of Elijah? Where is your God? Huh? Ecclesiastes 8, verses 11 on to verse 13. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. How you think. Now what we just read, we learned that you mess around and you afflict the fatherless and the widow. Okay? Those who are needy like that. You're going to have a problem with the Lord. Okay? 
You're going to have a problem with the Lord. All right? Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though, and now here, though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Verse 13. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not God. And there's an answer to your question, well, what if those fatherless and widows are evil, right? Or are not believing? Hmm? What if? Hmm? What if? He maketh his, the sun to the S-U-N to rise on the evil and on the good. Okay? The, there are and there are fatherless and widows who are not saved. But for that, what do you say? For that, what do you say? Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three. Verses eight and nine. Second Peter chapter three. Verses eight and nine. But beloved, and this is very important. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Okay? Way too many people want to, who, who believe in the redemption, the scriptural doctrine, the truth of the coming redemption of the purchased possession, they like to tie this into the, 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 uh, not the, excuse me, the kingdom of heaven reign. Okay? Uh, I almost said millennium. Okay? But what this verse is telling us is what? God is not within the construct of what we know as time, okay? That's why when you have people saying, well, where's the God of Elijah? Where's your God? Vengeance belongs unto our God, okay? Um, God does not live within our time frame. He lives outside of our time. What is a thousand years to an eternal being who has no beginning and has no end, who just is? Huh? What is a thousand years to him? <laughs> but one day. And one day is a thousand years. Okay, that's what that is talking about. Okay? You and I, I'm getting old. I'm going to be 49 years of age, Lord willing, coming up here in August, okay? You're however you old you are, okay? Here on earth, on, in this heaven and earth, okay? Thermodynamics, things break down with time. Unless you're a Jesuit, stupid communist who, or whatever, and you think that things get uh, evolutionary uh, philosophy or whatever, things get better in time. No. No, things break down. Things deteriorate, okay? But see, when we are redeemed, when we die and go to be with the Lord, or when you die and you go to hell, to the inevitable lake of fire, okay, that is for eternity, okay? We will ourselves, when we die, or be caught up to go to be with the Lord, we ourselves, there is going to be no time to be concerned about. Why? Because it's going to be eternal. Okay? The other thing is also true. You die and go to hell, you're going to be burning for eternity. And some of you cute people, you feel, well, hell is thrown into the lake of fire. Yes, you're not going to get away from burning for eternity, dear friend. Our bodies, these, are temporary. Okay? So why it's so baffling why anyone wants to worship this. I mean, it really is, okay? But see, we are going to live in eternity in one of two places. In the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ or in hell also within the presence thereof. Okay? But, verse 9. The Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise, as some men 
count slackness. We see we see these devils, these Jesuit scoundrels, these coadjutors getting away with such devilment. And what do the uh, atheists and what do some other uh, people say? Well, where's the God of Elijah? Where's your God? Okay. Where is your God, right? Huh? The, the fatherless, the widow, the stranger and the poor being afflicted. Okay. Where's your God? Come on, come on. Uh, our Lord doesn't live within our frame of time. His judgment, <laughs> look, dear friend, his judgment is coming. Okay? All right? Some of you, you ought to be very thankful that he has given you today. Okay? You have to understand, once the body of Christ, the church of the living God, get redeemed, caught up, this dispensation is over. Then things are going to start with the domino effect. Then you're going to have muy rápido, okay? In comparison of the dispensation we are in, okay? You have no idea of grace or his long suffering. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, mankind. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to belief. Oh, excuse me. It says repentance. And repentance is not belief. Watch out for the easy believers and heretic. Especially in this uh, thing here. Okay? All right? Well, it's going from unbelief to belief. The Lord rebuke you, you wicked devils. Okay? The Lord, the devils also believe in tremble. Okay? But, again, God does not live within our construct of time. He is an eternal being. Okay? So, you might be saying, well, where, where is your God? Where is this judgment you're talking about? It, it, it's going to come. And you ought to be very grateful. And when it's too late, you're going to recognize what you had. And it will be too late. And also, 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Not Thessalonians. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come on to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man and men. The man, Christ Jesus, and his mother, Mary. <clears throat> and that's not in there, obviously. Okay? Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. God is long-suffering. Okay? Long-suffering. All right? You need to consider why you, why is some of this happening and judgment isn't here yet. Long suffering for someone to come to repentance and get saved? Or, like you see with Pharaoh, how the Lord rose up Pharaoh, who from the beginning already had a hard heart because he thought he was a god, and the Lord just helped him along in that, okay? To make an example of people, okay? The Lord has his purposes, okay? But his judgment, his mercy, his grace, it will come. Okay? That requires patience! Patience! I'm not a doctor. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. But it requires patience. But, okay, as we have seen, there is a provision, there is a statute there to, to take, to be mindful of the fatherless and the widow. Okay? Now let's go to Deuteronomy 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Okay? You may be a single mother yourself, saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, seeking an husband. 
It may be more easier for you, dear sister, to find a godly husband. We have scripture, Solomon himself, a man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. It is, and you look at the feminazi stuff going on, but because of the Jesuit order and everything they're doing here in America with the feminism and exalting women above men. And like you see these stupid TV shows where the women are these intellectual creatures and men are portrayed as imbeciles or they are these superheroes. As if we needed heroes, okay? <laughs> A woman who feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And there are those of you, my brethren, to find an actual woman, a sister of God, hmm? in your own nation? <laughs> yeah. Is it impossible? No. But in these days, it seems kind of that it's not probable, doesn't it? But let's continue. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 22. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. The earth also, with all that therein is. Everything is the Lord's. Okay? Even for the wicked, even the wicked for the day of evil thereof, okay? Nothing happens without his permission or knowledge. You're not going to get anything past the Lord, okay? Okay? Only the Lord had the delight in thy fathers to love them, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Context. Speaking unto the, the Hebraic Jewish people, okay, under the law, which was by faith and works, okay? Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff necked. For the Lord your God is God of little g gods, and Capital L, Lord of little L, Lords. A great God, a mighty, and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. Verse 18. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Now see, Christianity takes this love and turns it into the Splenda sweet, this high fructose corn syrup, poisonous bro hug, Non, uh, non truthful love, okay. You love your enemies today by telling them the truth. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For in so doing, you'll pour coals of fire on his head. Overcome not evil with evil, overcome evil with good, okay. That, that, hey, come on, you know that's within the Pauline epistles. That's doctrine for us today. That's why we're staying my, a majority in the Old Testament. Okay? All right? We know that. All right? But see, if you love someone, you're going to tell them, hey, you're not saved. You need to go to the Lord on his terms. Because if you don't, and he don't save you, you're going to go to hell. And you're going to burn for eternity. Okay? He's giving you the way out. But see, you've got to be broken of your self-righteousness. And that's the hard part for everybody. Even It was for me until he broke me to a sniveling piece of snot, <laughs> basically. Okay? All right? 
One too many people like to boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way, hence a thief and a robber, and hence not truly being saved. Okay? But he has made a way out. And to love the stranger here, love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. You were once one of those. You were once in the dunghill yourself. And yeah, yeah, a lot of the homeless people that I've encountered, they, they don't want to hear the truth. And yes, that stereotype is true. You give them money, sure. You'll, you'll go down and you'll see, I just gave that guy 10 bucks and look, he's walking out with a 12 pack. What do you do? Come on, let's, let's go get some food. I'll sit with you. Let's eat. Let's, I, can, I can use a little food. Let's go get some to eat. Hey, you thirsty? Let's go get something to drink, huh? You, you need a jacket? You need some shorts or some shoes or something? Let's go. I'll go with you. Go with them. Be with them. Give them that example, okay? Shoe on to them as an ambassador of Christ, living our lives according to the scripture, okay? Squid love their own. And so many, like our Lord said, the Pharisees cast of their abundance into the treasury or whatnot because they had an abundance and they're like, hey, look at me. But they were doing it just out of the abundance and hey, I'm, you know, whereas this is implying, showing us that you are to remember that you were one of them once yourself. And you are to have compassion. Not because, oh, well, I guess I got to. There are one too many people out there who give. Because number one, they think that they actually believe in works salvation. And number two, they have to. God loveth a cheerful giver. Give as you are able to give. Whether it's with the, this or however it is uh, you can. This is how I give. Okay? But, love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Okay, what are we reading to? Verse 22. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and him shalt thou cleave, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. Okay? And verse 22 and 21, uh, 21 and 22, uh, excuse me, verses 20 on to verse 22 are imperative to this because when you have the Lord at your center, keeping in a memory, I was once like that. I was once there myself. But one too many Christians, they get up on their high horse. They think they're, they're one of God's chosen people because of they're born in England or they're black or they're elect or non-elect or whatever it is. Or they've seen God or they, they talk and blah, 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 blah. Or, or they've been dunked in water or whatever. They forget. Conveniently so. And we're looking at this because so many of these Christians will acknowledge, we, oh yeah, we are so they give mu they give much love with their mouth, but their hearts go after their covetousness. Okay, but see, we're seeing in the Old Testament that this principle of remembering from whence you came was there even from the beginnings. That's why we're doing this. Okay, that's why we're doing this. And if you're fatherless, if you're a widow. Okay, if you're uh, if you're a single parent, is the Lord your praise? And if He is, if He is, He is your Father. And I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I haven't. Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 and 18. 
Genesis chapter 22, 15 and 18, on to 18. Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 on to verse 18. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. Singular there. Okay? And as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. His enemy. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. I'm married and I have a wife. You don't need to remind me that some of you are single and alone. Okay? I want to have that empathy for you, but you are right. You are right. I have a wife. Okay? You may not have a wife. You may not have a husband. Okay? But you do have a father. And I, I get it. I could go out right there and hug, kiss my wife, lie with her as a man and a wife are supposed a man and woman a husband and wife are to do yes sorry for that example but yes you can't some of you okay but you have the lord and you Brad, that's easy for you to say it's not knowing that i have what some of you don't it's not easy for me to say that and if that time come, if my wife goes before me and I'm by myself, yeah, I'm going to be in your shoes. But see, even then, we have to remember that we have a father who will never leave you nor forsake you. That's not easy for me to say, knowing that I can go out there and hug my wife. It's not easy for me to say that. Okay, it's not. Okay? I'm not alone. Not yet. And even like our Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane, ye shall leave me all alone. Yet I am never alone. The Father is always with me. And because our spirit and soul are housed within this disgusting flesh, what do we think of? Yeah, but... Yeah, but. Yeah, but. And hey, every single one of you of my brethren and my sisters, um, if my wife goes before me and I am widowed or made a widow, I ask for your pity. But you'll be like, well, I, I hope you wouldn't have to. Well, huh, Brad, remember what you, the Lord had you to say? <laughs> yeah, I hope I do. Okay? Yeah, I hope I do. But see, this is what the scriptures are saying to you. This is what the scripture is saying to you. He is thy praise. Okay? Galatians chapter 3. And the, the, the mention about his seed. Okay? Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 13. Oh, where, where'd you go? Verses 13 on to verse 16. Okay? Come on, Brad. What are you doing? Galatians 3. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, capital S, through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. 
Now to Abraham and his seed. Just looked at it. Where the promise is made. He saith not as to seeds as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. And skip to 26 on to verse 29. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Identified with Christ, okay? There is neither Jew nor Greek in salvation. There is neither bond nor free in salvation. There is neither male nor female in salvation. Okay? Even though the devils uh, do, are trans uh, rights, uh, trans women are women. No, they're not. Trans men are men. No, they're not. <laughs> no, you're not. No, they're not. Okay? God created them male and female. Get over it. Okay? For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Abraham's seed, you got a question about it? Be in the description box for you. Okay? Uh, uh, one moment, please. I beg your pardon. Okay, I had to write that down for the links in the description box, okay? So, now let's continue. Go back now to Deuteronomy. To Deuteronomy chapter 14. Deuteronomy chapter 14, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 28 and 29. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 28 and 29. Now here again, this is instruction in righteousness. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. And who? What is our hope? Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Okay? You are seen in the scriptures that if you are a single mother, a single father, fatherless, a widow, the Lord from the beginning has made, has put it on to those who are to be his. Hey, don't forget the fatherless and the widow. Don't forget the stranger, because you were a stranger in Egypt. Okay? Don't forget the poor. Okay? Don't forget that. Verse 28 on to verse 29. And I recommend to you, pause this video and read Deuteronomy chapter 14 for the complete context. We're just touching on these, and you'll see why. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year. And I'm writing that down. Uh, tithe. God does not dwell in temples made with hands. Tithing was a requirement under the dispensation of the law because they had an actual physical temple. Okay? If you want to exercise, do the thing of like, okay, putting 10% aside of whatever. I have heard from people who are actually saved. Well, the, the thing of tithing, putting away the 10%, has actually helped me to save money. Hey, great for you. But see, church buildings put it into you, and you can see this in that disgusting Sam Gipp. You see it in uh, 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 that, that, that Lawson guy, I think it was. You see it in any one of these Christians that have these buildings. They will talk to you about tithing, and then they'll go to Malachi and stuff like that. You know, to try to, you are not required to tithe today. God does not dwell in temples made with hands. You're in a church building, and they play the melodic music to get to your sentiment, to, to pull on your heartstrings, okay? They're deceiving you. They're trying to manipulate you. You are not required today in this dispensation to tithe. If you want to, go ahead and knock yourself out. Why in the wide world of sports entertainment do you want to give your money onto something that is traceable back onto Rome? The phallus houses, the church buildings, okay? That's your problem. But you are not required to tithe today, okay? In the description box, there will be a very old video that the Lord had me to do on tithing. You will be able to see that, okay? You are not required to tithe today, okay? You are not required to tithe, to tithe today. 
So, just so you know. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year, and shalt weigh it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, the Lord was, is the, was his inheritance. The Levite, okay? And we all today, there is the priesthood of the believer. It, you do not see priesthood of the believer in Scripture. No. But what does that mean? You and I of the church of the living God who are saved, born again, converted, we can personally go to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't need a Jesuit priest or a pastor or whatever to be the thing between. We have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And it ain't Mary either. Okay? The Lord is our inheritance. The similarities there with the priesthood of the believer today as with the Levitical priesthood, meaning that the priests, the Levites, were the ones under the law that would go to the Lord. Today, you can go to the Lord yourself. It doesn't matter who you are. You don't need a Jesuit priest to go to him or your, your Baptist or charismatic, whatever. You can go to the Lord yourself. But... And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat and be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand, which thou doest. Which thou doest. Okay? And look over here to Deuteronomy 15. Verses 7 on to verse 11. If there be among you a poor man or one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. And who is my brother, right? Okay. But see, you got to remember too, we have already seen that the Lord, the stranger, the stranger, okay, the stranger, someone who is not of you. Okay? A lot of Christians, these Christians, say, don't, don't help those who are not saved. Do you remember from whence you came? Hmm? Hmm? I know that people who were saved when I was lost helped me. And who are you? Huh? Huh, you and your high horse. Huh? It's all gone to your head. What's wrong with you? Hmm? <clears throat> but thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need, in that which he wanteth. Not like gimme, 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 wanteth, lap. Thank you for that, brother. Okay? Lack. All right? We are to care for our own as we can. But to, well, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a, a King James Bible-believing Christian. Anything I help them with, they're going to use for sin. Well, why don't you get off your high horse, tough guy, and go with the homeless. Go with the poor. Go with them. Let them get in your fancy schmancy vehicle, whatever one you have, and take them to the Wally World or something. It's like, here, get yourself some pants. Hey, you want a subway? Subway. But you want a subway? Come on. Huh? Have you done that before? Or are you too good to do that? Huh? See, our Lord has allotted this thing to not forget the fatherless, the widow, the poor, the stranger. Okay? But one too many of Christianity. And why does it seem to be prevalent within the Baptist slash King James Bible believing? And also that they're not all, but I mean, also you got these other de demonations. Okay? Is Christ divided? All right? You see that. 
and they're ha they're helping people to be like, well, look at me. Like you see that thing, and this might be the thumbnail of uh, a guy giving money to a homeless person while taking a selfie. They give to the hey, I give to the I give all this, I give all this. And the Lord's like, yeah, you did, but I never knew you. What is the heart behind your giving? So that you may look good? Or is it because you remember that you were once there yourself? And you who are in that position, you need your father. Your father is the Lord Jesus Christ. But is he your father or is your father the devil? I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. The Lord always comes through for his own. Okay? And if he lets things fall, is it because you've done something? Or is it for his glory? Okay? All right? Verse 9. Beware that there be not, beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart. God names your heart. <clears throat> Saying, the seventh year, the year of release is at hand. And thine eye be evil against thy poor brother. And thou givest him naught. And he cry unto the Lord against thee. And it be sin unto thee. Thou shalt surely give him. And thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him. And see, verse 9 and here, starting in verse 10, it's like, well, hey, you know, whatever I can give you, it's supposed to go to the Lord, so I can't help you out. We're going to look at that, okay? But, see, it's talking about giving for the wrong reason. If you're giving just to give because, well, I guess I got to, you're missing it, okay? You're missing it. Well, I got, I, even, even lost people know enough to give on to people, okay? But you're doing it, oh, because your arm is twisted? You're supposed to remember that, number one, where you came from, and number two, someone who is fatherless and who is a widow, okay? Because that for this thing, the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works, and in all that thou puttest thine hand unto. And what are we reading to? Verse 11. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, comma, to thy poor, comma, and to thy needy, comma, in thy land. Not because you got to. And not because, well, I'm going to give and I'm going to get a blessing. You're missing it, dude. That's the wrong basis. That is a giving based on what will accrue to you. Hence, covetousness, which the Lord abhorreth. Okay? All right? Deuteronomy chapter 24. Deut not Joshua. Deuteronomy chapter 24. Verses 14 on to verse 28. Uh, excuse me. 22. And this is happening in astonishing number today here in America and also in other parts of the, uh, of the world. Okay? Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. Do we need to expound on that? Or do you just not want to accept that? That's your problem. Let's continue. At his day, payday, thou shalt give him his hire, Neither shall the sun go down upon it. Neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor, and setteth his heart upon it. 
lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. When I used to work in the secular world for a lost Robinite, who no longer owns the place, um, he was very lax at about paying his people. He was very forgetful. And uh, he had to be reminded, and he was reminded, it's like, hey, dude, you know, that that's that's my livelihood. That's my rent. Okay, that's, the, you know, and back in that, at that time, you know, I was working in the secular world. It's like, dude, that that's bills. That's food. That's rent. Come on, man. Just because, well, you, oh, I just forgot. Okay. Was it malicious? No, it was just laziness on his part. Okay. But woe to you people who are out there who will do that maliciously, trying to save a little money. Okay. Yes, at his day thou shalt give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor, and setteth his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. The father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. You're all going to give an account of your own selves unto God, whether at the judgment seat or at the great white throne. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger. There we see it again. Nor the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. She's so poor she'd give you the clothes off her back so she can get something. But thou shalt... Here it is again. Here it is again. See... One too many Christian. This is why I'm not a Christian. This is why I'm adamant about making the distinction between these people who call themselves Christians and what we refer to ourselves as. Okay? All right? Devils can mimic the works that accompany those who claim to be saved. <coughs> but what are the reasons behind it? But thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. When thou couldst on thine harvest in the, thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. Okay? It's like, oh, I forgot that. Let's go. Let's let's get everything. It's like, no, 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 dude. What if there's someone like that, like someone who's a fatherless, a widow, a poor, homeless, or whatever? Okay? See, our Lord here is making provision for that. And many of you will be quick to quote me about what it says for us how to do this today in the New Testament. But see, the Lord from the beginnings of it made provision for it. That's the point. And if you're fatherless and widow, and the Lord isn't your father, but you're serving the little G-God of this world, your father, the devil, oh boy! Oh boy! Yeah. But see, those of you who are of the church of the living God, I don't know what it's like to be single, like in that context, no. I probably will. But even then, I need to remember that I have a father who will never leave me nor forsake me. When thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the bows again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger. For the fatherless and for the widow. And here again. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. Are you so high and mighty that you have forgotten compassion? Are you so proud of yourself? Well, what, what good is it going to do them? They're lost anyway. You, the Lord rebuke you. 
and that money that you covet after so much, choke on it. Choke on it. Are you Christians out there? Deuteronomy 26. Deuteronomy 26. Verses 12 on to verse 14. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase the third year, again, pause the video and read Deuteronomy 26 in its entirety. Okay? Remember the thing about tithing. Description box. Okay? Don't believe when these people in these buildings... They're playing that melodic music to influence you. You usually got a, what do, what do they call that woman? The worship leader sitting up there, standing up there like, oh, oh, looking all solemn. And you got a guy, a Jesuit coadjutor, Lord bless this offering, blah, 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 blah. Preaching to you. Malachi. Yeah, watch out for that. Don't, don't, don't fall for that. You're going to give to a ministry. You're going to give to someone. Do it for the reasons that are right. Don't do it because of a scare tactic for something that isn't even for us today in this dispensation. If you want to do that, you know, like put aside, okay, I'm putting 10% 10 away and it helps you to save. I've, I've heard of brethren doing that. Knock yourself out. But don't fall for the thing that you got to give your 10% of before uh, of gross <sighs> like that that idiot gip said uh it's until you go beyond 10 percent, you're really that's when you're really giving Dude, shut up shut up okay shut up okay when thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase the third year which is the year of tithing and hast given it unto the levite the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Again, we're seeing that the Lord, no matter what, hey, remember those who have it worse than you. Try to have a little apathy. Have a sympathy, pity, compassion. But one too many Christians. These Christians... Get the selfie giving money to a homeless person, right? They, well, if I give them anything, they're going to use it for evil. Go with them, hotshot, or is your little truck too special to have a stankin' homeless man or woman in there for it with you, huh? What would happen if you know, some of you people who are kindredists, who, who have this mentality, uh, you're of Japheth, I'm not going to go witness on to those of Ham. Or you're of Ham, I'm not going to go on to those of Japheth, or as some of them call them Esau. Stupid. Uh, what would happen if the Lord orchestrated something where a someone of an opposing kin, uh, kindred, because you told them the truth and the Lord saved them, embraced you, homeless, stanking, snotting all over you. How would you react? Like, ah! Verse 13. Then shalt thou say before the Lord thy God, I have, uh, what are we reading to? Uh, where are we? Verse 14. I have brought away the hollow things out of mine house, and also have given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. They were commanded to do, the, do that. But remember, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Okay? Okay? Do it for the right reasons. Not because, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, I got to. I have not eaten thereof in any in my morning. Neither have I taken away aught thereof for any unclean use. Nor given aught thereof for the dead. Oh, Catholic. 
giving alms for the dead. Uh, money's in the coffers, something about getting them out of purgatory, however that went, I don't know. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. They were commanded to do this. But see, the Lord wanted them to do it for the right reason, not just because he commanded them. And then when you read about our Lord, about how he rebuked the Pharisees, they did all their works. They're, you know, I give ten, uh, tithes of this and that. Okay, and they do all their works to be seen from men. The wrong reasons. Okay? They were to remember that they were, that they were in that position once themselves. Okay? I was basically a fatherless child myself. I was raised by my mother. My father came back into the picture, yes, and then for that I am grateful, yes, 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 yes. But see, the Lord wants us to be that example. And then when you got some certain Christians out there who's like, well, just do it for safe people and totally neglect those who aren't, who are in, and they're, and you, and you're worried, and this is legitimate, okay? That if you just give, the, just hand it over to them, that they're going to use it for evil. That's a, okay. Then, you know, get off your high horse and go with them. Are you too special to do that? Horse leech hath two daughters crying, give, give. Deuteronomy chapter tw uh, 27, just one verse, verse 19. And also remember, here's a stark reminder. Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say amen. And again, some of you will be saying, well, well today, where's the, where's the God of Elijah? Where's that judgment? It's coming. We've already looked at that. Okay? He's long-suffering. And you, who are the single parent, the single father, the single mother, okay? The, I, I, we are purposely not touching on 1 Corinthians 7. Okay, we are purposely not touching on that. Okay, I have a wife. Yes, I do. Okay, I, okay, I, I do. My wife is a great cook. Okay, we work together. Okay, sadly, unfortunately, my wife may go before me. I hope we all go together. Okay, and then, yes, I'll know what it's like to be in your shoes. I want to have that empathy for you, though. But we also have to remember we are not alone. Okay, yeah, the Lord might not isn't physically present there with you. But you can reach out to a brother or a sister. That's not the same. No, it may not be. But some of us are just a phone call away. An email away. Because we are to what? Bear each other's burdens. Okay? Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Fatherless widow. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, 
that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And we are of the Lord's house, not a building. We belong unto him. Okay, that's what that's a reference on to. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Now that physical temple is being referenced onto, onto right there. Okay, but you got to remember the Psalms were written under the law. This was written by David. Okay, okay. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a lowercase r rock. And who is that rock? That rock is Christ. That's not capital R true, but. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. You're, you're fatherless, you're a widow, you're saved. Seek my face. My heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. The Lord might not there be there in a physical body before you, but if you're saved, he's, he lives within you. And remember, or else this isn't true, or else this is not true says there's no temptation that has taken you but that which is common among men but with every temptation the lord has will provide a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it and every time that you don't look for that way of escape and you do that thing and you give yourself over to your sin you make the dumb choice the lord shows you hey guess what see that that was your way of escape Every single time without exception. And it's not, again, it isn't easy for me to say, knowing that I could pause this video, go right out there and hug my wife, give her a big old kiss on the lips, and do whatever. And that is why it's not easy for me to say this to some of you. Because of that. This is what the Lord is saying to you. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy face, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. When my father and my mother forsake me, your son, your daughter who has not a father or a mother, you have a father. But are your, is your father right now the little G-God of this world? Is he your father? Let us reason together, you and I, so that you may know your true father. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out, breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Verses 4 and 2, verse 11. Psalm 68, verses 4 and verse 11. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless. And a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. Now you out there who are saved, 
who are a widow, whether you're uh, a husband or a wife, you're a, a, an only mother or an only father, okay? All right? A father of the fatherless and a judge of widows is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Bringeth out those who are bound with chains, taken by Satan's will, bound in sin. Take them out of the dunghill that you and I were once in. Okay, hold your place here. Go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter, where are you going? Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. We're, we're in this for the long haul. Mark chapter 10, verses 23 and verse 31. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Why? That, that's, this is a reference unto spiritual. Because if you have riches, then you have something to fall back on. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 talks about that. Not many mighty, not many wise, not many noble. Why? Because you can get caught up. You could be, you know, caught up in yourself, you know. Not caught up like caught up the redemption. But, you know, you could be, you know, well, I got a lot of money. I got the, you know. That's why these idiots like the Robertsons, these millionaire Christians, yeah, 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 yeah. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? <laughs> it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. A camel going through the eye of the needle. This is a figure of speech. Okay? Um, <laughs> a camel, you've seen the needle's eye and you know how big a camel is. He's saying it's easier for that to happen than for a rich man to enter into the spiritual kingdom of God. Because you got to remember, the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of Christ on earth, it's all works. Because he's going to be on the throne. <laughs> Genius. Kingdom of God, this is a reference unto the spiritual. Let's continue. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. And this is a true saying. And Christianity has trivialized this. Remember in 1 Corinthians, where it says, not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise. Not saying that it can't happen, but not many. Why? Because the wise, the mighty, the rich have it far worse than you and I, brother and sister. Okay? Like always, we don't know if we're going to be able to pay our bills this month. Okay? We don't. And praise the Lord. You know why? Because that means... We're dependent on him alone and his mercy, okay? But see, when you have the best that this world can offer, okay, and you get high and mighty, I've seen this. I've seen this in so many of these Christians. And it scares me because, and thank the Lord that he keeps us poor. I, I mean that. I mean that. The Lord has taken away many people. Praise the Lord that he has. That should never have been around us in the first place. And has left us with this core of saved brethren. Who I trust. Okay? Alright? But we are dependent upon him. But see when you get to a point where you don't necessarily have to depend on him because you got you got it all covered for years and years and years and years, right? You have it worse than we do. You have it worse than we do. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lord, 
We have left all and followed thee. Look at verse 29. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and the last first. Verse 30 specifically, go back to um, Psalm 68. God setteth the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. I have many brothers. I have many sisters. Okay? My brothers and sisters, what I have, I consider to be, what I mean is yours. What I mean, if my brother, if our brother from Ohio, you know who you are, will one day show up. Like, Brad, I'm sorry. I, I just have to come and see y'all. My wife be like, oh, 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 come on, come on in, come on in. This is Brother Alexander's room, but hey, it's a spare bed. Come on, come on. We got air mattresses out in the garage, okay? Come on in, come on in. Have you ever had tater tot casserole? My wife makes a wonderful tater tot casserole. It's like, come on in, okay? Mi casa su casa, okay? Mine is yours, okay? You're my brother, you're my sister. You were to come out from out of nowhere. At first we'd be like, uh, okay, okay, okay. But, it's like, what, what, hey, come on, come on. <laughs> Wife's like, do we have enough food? We'll make it. And we always do. See how this works? And of course, now go to Philippians chapter 1, 27 on verse 30. Philippians chapter 1. 27 on to verse 30. Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 on to verse 30. If you're there, start reading it yourself, okay? <laughs> this set of scriptures is not really fully broken in yet. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 on to verse 30. Only let your conversation be as, be as it becometh the gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Okay? And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here to be in me, being of one spirit and of one mind. Okay? One spirit and of one mind. With each other. And also remembering that we were once there ourselves. Let's continue now. In Psalm 68, <clears throat> Oh, we have uh, Second Tim excuse me, Second Timothy chapter two, Second Timothy chapter two. Sorry about that. Second Timothy chapter two, verses eight on to verse sixteen. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, the gospel that was revealed unto Paul, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. The elect he's talking about are those who went the elected way of the cross, not the satanic Calvinism, okay? That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, that to that we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will de also deny us. That's not talking about salvation, okay? That's talking about other things. You're, you, you come to the Lord on his terms and he saved you. You're once saved, always saved, sealed unto the day of redemption, eternally secure. But you can lose a lot of other things. Testimony, provision, mercy, grace, 
whatever. Okay? Said that's not talking about salvation. Let's continue. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit. Words to no profit are not people who are trying to tell you, hey, make a distinction between what is called a Christian today and the church of the living God. That's not, the prophet is, prophet is doing things according to the scriptures. Okay? Words to no profit are people telling you you got to keep the commandments, okay, that you are not once saved, always saved. Words to no profit are taking things from another dispensation and trying to make them pertinent doctrinally for today. We've already proved that in a video. Uh, no profit, write that down for the description box. Okay, no profit, check that out, okay? But to the subverting of the hearers, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Verse 16, talking about what the words that no prophet are, even a little bit more. Okay? All right? Now let's go back to Psalm 68, picking up at verse 7. O God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, Silah, the earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of the God of Israel. Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation hath dwelt therein. Thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. We have the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Great was the company of those that published it. Are you publishing the word of God by walking according to the scriptures? As an ambassador for Jesus Christ? Huh? Or are you too high and mighty? Isaiah 54. Check out this beautiful thing here. This is beautiful here. Isaiah 54, verses 1 on to verse 11. Uh, excuse me. Uh, 1 on to verse 10, not 11. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry loud, thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. You're poor, you're a stranger, you're fatherless, you're a widow, you're a single parent. The Lord could have your back. See, you gotta go to him on his terms. And if you are of the Lord's, he's got you. He's got you. Don't forget that. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. Put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shall and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. Don't look at me. Look at verse five. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, 
shall he be called. And we're the bride of Christ. In salvation there is neither male or female. Physically, okay, you got, yes, you're right. And again, you're right, Brad, you can go hug your wife Susan. Yes, you are right. What is the Lord telling you in the scriptures? Don't sidestep that. You're right, I don't know what it's like. I'm trying, I want to have that empathy for you. I, 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 but I, I, you're right, I, you're right. You know, you got to cook your own meal. You got to clean your own place. I get that. I get that. Okay? But you're not alone. And yes, if I am widowed myself, or if my wife is widowed, even then, we're not alone. This is what the Lord is saying to you through the scriptures. Okay? Try to look a, a part of the messenger. Okay? For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, as a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, Seth, the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. We're skipping a certain part here. Some of you with the question marks, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, he said, no. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 3. And in those days, this dispensation, and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look out among you seven men of honest report, filled with the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Now, like I said, many of us already know, well, yeah, uh, in this dispensation, the thing for the fatherless, the widows, and the poor was there. But see, it was important for us to look in the Old Testament that that was something from the onset, okay? From the calling of Israel out of Egypt, okay? You're fatherless, you're a widow, okay? You're a single parent. The Lord has your back if you belong unto him, okay? If you belong unto him, okay? He maketh the sun to, to shine on the evil and the good, S-U-N. Okay? He has given you today because he's long-suffering. Okay? You're a single parent, a fatherless child, or whatever. Okay? You need to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your father. Okay? He is the answer. He is your everything. Not the state, but he is. And see, and that's what Jesuitism has done with the communism that they're instilling here in America. That the state is the, takes the place of father and mother. But is your father that of the devil? Hmm? If you're saved and you're a widow 
Fatherless, the Lord has your back. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. I, with my own eyes, have not seen the righteous forsaking or his seed begging bread. He provides. At the last minute, on scary, like, oh, it's been like that ever since we've been living here. Okay? But he always comes through. He's going to be there for you. That might not help that loneliness of flesh that you have right now. But you're not alone. That, that's what the Lord's telling you. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Now this, this we have to touch on. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Verses 3 on to verse 16. Okay? Honor widows that are widows indeed. What does that mean? Well, widows, we saw someone who lost their husband or wife, right? Right? Context, as we saw, it was for Tamar. But they call a husband who has lost his wife also a widow, okay? Whatever. What does this mean, a widow indeed? Let's look. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to shew piety at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. A clue. So a widow indeed doesn't have what? Children or nephews. You might be a widow, but your children, your child is what? 10, 12 years old? Okay? Or you might be a widow and your children or nephews or whatever are grown up. What does that mean? Okay? See, the Lord, the woman, is not to go out and do what pertains unto a man, to go out into the workforce. The Lord is not against a woman and a woman of God. Okay? Woman of God, writing that down. Okay? The Lord is not against you having an income. The Lord is against you going to get in a job at Walmart, at the grocery store, or doing something like that. Okay? He is. So if you are a widow and you have, like, children or nephews that could help you, that's who you go to. So a widow indeed would have be lacking what? These things. Let's continue. Now she, verse 5, Now she that is a widow indeed, and desolate, trusteth in God, and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. That's why we looked at Isaiah 54, verses 1 on to verse 10. Okay? Okay? All right? But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge, that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, and especially that for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and, in wor and is worse than an infidel. Aha! My sister, if she were to become a widow, okay, scripturally, okay, she could come to us or my other brother, you know, you know, relation, nephews and stuff like that. It's, you know, and children. She's got her own children. OK, she becomes a widow. She should go to them. It's like, OK, mom, I, I'm going to, you know, hey, uh, father is gone. This is horrible. But, you know, don't worry. You know, we're, we're, we're there for you. But see, if the children are not there, if they don't have children or whatever like that, they lost their children and they were killed or whatever. That's a widow indeed. That's what Paul is distinguishing from. And see, we are to provide for his own, for our own. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Let's continue. Let not a widow be taken into the uh, number under three score years, two, four, six. 60 years, 60 years old, having been the wife of one man, 
well reported of for good works, if she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. Notice, okay, that doesn't mean going out of the house. There are some of you that will look at brought up children. You got to be careful with that one. Got to be careful with that one. But the younger widows refuse. Younger than what? Younger than 60. Why? For when they shall begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. So, see, now that, if you're a younger widow, okay, you got relatives, like, whatever, you can go to them. Okay? But see, they what will this be? Uh, where they are, where we just... Um, Wax wanton against Christ, forgetting that the Lord is your covering, and you're wanting, you know, a husband and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with wanting a husband, but if the Lord is not providing you a husband, if the Lord is not providing you a wife, okay? Verse 13, and with all, they learn to be idle. Wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned aside after Satan, going after what he offers. If any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged, that it may relieve them that are widows indeed, desolate, and have nobody. Okay? All right? Who have nobody. And even in all these cases, if you're saved, who is your father? Okay? And of course, you know, you can look in Exodus about how you're supposed to care of them, okay? <clears throat> Exodus, uh, you know what, we, we can skip that. We can skip that. We can skip that. Ultimately, we need to remember this. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Verses 25 on to verse 28. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire but thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a-whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. I have not seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. You're saved. The Lord is your husband. The Lord is your father. We are the bride of Christ. I don't know what it's like to be alone in the context that you do. But this, this is what the scriptures are telling you. Okay? This is what the scriptures are telling you. Psalm 34. These were added today. Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verses 9 on verse 18. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. 
father and the mother are to teach the children. What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. And ultimately, John 6, verse 68. Just one verse, and we're going to finish with this. John 6, verse 68. Let's read 67 on to verse 69. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? A little sarcasm from our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord! To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Where else are you going to go? What else is there for you? The Lord is your only hope. And that's the point. Mother and father may forsake you, but the Lord will take you up. The world say you're not qualified or overqualified. You're not the right skin color. You're not this, you're not that. The Lord will take you up. You don't have a wife. You don't have a husband. You're an only mother. You're an only father. Uh, you're an, uh, you're, excuse me, excuse me. You're a single mother. You're a single father. The Lord's not going to abandon you. But see... You have to be of the Lord. Now we have seen the Lord will make provision even for those in the, who are the poor, the fatherless, the widow, the stranger. Okay? But see, he will make provisions unto them to give them testimony of himself through us, the ones who ought to be doing it. It's bad when you see Catholicism and their Catholic charities and all this stuff. Those who work for Satan having and shewing more charity onto those who are needy than those of us who have means to do so and are not. That is going to be it for this video. Like I said, brother, um, I doubt this is what you were thinking. But this is what the Lord had, would have done. So that is going to be it for this video. And, you know, there are ways you can give and help people out. Not always like this, okay? There are other ways. However you are able, be able. Thank you for watching this if you do. I hope this may have been stunned. Well, I hope the Lord be glorified. The Lord be magnified. That's, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Um, thank you for those of you who help us and pray for us. We love you. We pray for you. Um, and just thank you, brethren, sisters, church of the living God. Got uh, some interesting stuff coming this week, Lord willing. Uh, another rebuke towards these wicked charismatics. Something that uh, we went through last night, which will going to be a video uh, here. And um, also a warning about some, a certain individual. Um, but anyway... Thank you for watching. If you do, we love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.